Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jen Liddy of Jen Liddy Coaching and Development and today I'm interviewing Mike Calagero who I know from um, my yoga teacher training of a, over a year ago and Mike has a day job and he is a professional and he's an accountant and then he has this fascinating other side of his life that I wanted to share with you. He started 315 Yoga out of New Hartford, New York, which is a suburb of Utica. And I wanted him to tell his story today because he's a guy who had a dream, has a dream, can see the long term, and he's doing the little chips along the way to chip away at his dream. So I wanted him to tell his story today to you so that you could see regardless of whether you're male or female, all creative people struggle with the same stuff in bringing their ideas to life. So Mike, I really want to uh, pre uh, tell you how much I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So I have some questions for you and I'd love for you to start by telling us just who are you? Um, what do you do? I'd love for you to talk about both of your jobs and okay. how do you describe the dream that you brought to life? Okay. Well, so first and foremost, uh, I'm a husband. I got married about a year and a half ago. So very new, very, you know, buying a house, the whole thing. Um, like you said, I have a full-time job. I work for a human services company, not-for-profit um, in Utica, uh, doing accounting. So that takes up a lot of my time. But uh, about that time when we met, going through that teacher training, uh, something clicked with me and said, I want to do this more. So it started out as a hobby. Uh, just started uh, teaching a class maybe one day a week. Um, but I guess you could say caught the bug and started to look at other opportunities, doing it more, wanting to research how do I do this, and then actually uh, started a stand-up paddleboard option of it. So I do stand-up paddleboard yoga now, too. So. When, when you and I met, you saw yoga as your retirement plan. And yeah, that's right. I was really surprised at how quickly you shifted gears and just made it your, your immediate side gig, you know, mm. right away. So retirement plan um, in the sense that I don't want to work till I'm 80. Um, it's not going to be this windfall of cash that I can just sit back and relax. Um, when I say retirement, I mean, when I get to a point where I don't want to work anymore at a day job, I've got this side gig right now to fall back on, to bring in a little bit of income, to do something that I'm happy with. And if it's yoga, great, because now I'm staying healthy and being active too. Mm -hmm. The other thing I love about your story is that you're an accountant, which is a, which is typically not noted as a creative field. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people who want to go from idea to reality get stuck in this place of well, I'm not a creative type, or I don't, um, I don't know how to do this. And you, you are able to access both sides of your brain and see yourself as the accountant. You know, you're wearing your tie and you go to, to work. And then you've also got this yoga business and entrepreneurial side of yourself. Can you talk a little bit about how those work together? Yeah, absolutely. So um, long before, years ago, when I started practicing, well, I started practicing really, you know, just on a, I need something more active, something different. Um, but somehow, as I went through that, the, the balance of yin and yang really resonated with me. There's I, the accountant side. I'm very structured. I write things down just to cross them off. I mean, those are, that's who I am. But at the same time, there's that balance of, I don't need that 100% of my time. Mm -hmm. And so I can access the yoga, the creativity, come up with great ideas. I think some of why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I've had these great ideas and I talk to someone about them and now oh, you don't want to do that. Or why would you do that? Or that's silly, you know? And then six months later, somebody else does it. Mm -hmm. Perfect example would be food trucks. I said, Oh, great business. Food truck rentals. People are into food trucks. Food trucks is this big thing, not accessible to a lot of people rent the food truck. Oh no, no, no. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody didn't do that, but the explosion of food trucks now mm -hmm. gave me the, the idea, boy, that would have been something. So after a while, you just say, I'm not going to just talk about it. I've got to do it. And I'm not going to just wait for somebody else to give me permission. I give myself permission. Exactly. That's exactly. That's so important. So why is bringing your dream to life so important to you? And I would love for you to talk a little bit more about your dream. I know that it's not just teaching yoga. I know that you, right. you want to do more than just teach yoga. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no. Um, what I've been finding as I've been practicing is there's a, a calmness. Uh, people have noticed at work, they said, geez, you seem different. What's going on? What, you know, you're not uh, be getting out there and, and in my job, I have to get in people's face to say, hey, this isn't right or this isn't, you know, it's just part of it. You know, you don't usually get a phone call from me just to say, hey, great job. Usually there's something wrong first. Um, and but now with the practice, it gives me a, a different perspective on how to approach it. Right. And how uh, you can look at things from their perspective. Maybe they didn't notice something. Maybe it's a learning opportunity. And so that helps. So instead of just teaching yoga or teaching um, ideas that come across, now it's more about imparting what I'm living, right? So lead by example is what I'm trying to do at least. Um, and we all struggle with it. You know, we all have our bad days and, and you just, okay, tomorrow's a new day and we're going to start differently. And, th and that's really what I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is just live what I'm teaching or what I'm practicing to show people that it can be done, especially for me. Sure. So you've embodied this calmness and you've seen a shift and it's subtle and you would like to help other people feel what you feel. Yes, absolutely. Most entrepreneurs that I meet have some similar story. Their journey is I figured this out and I want to help you figure it out because it made my life so much better. Yeah. So, yeah. What keeps most of us from actually doing that, from, from helping other people, um, is that we have troubling or painful or destructive thoughts that keep us stuck. It keeps the idea in our head. So I'm wondering, yeah. did you have any of those um, negative limiting thoughts that, that were plaguing you? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, like I said, I've always had these wonderful ideas, but never put them into practice. Mm -hmm. I think it was always believing that what other people were saying were right, mm -hmm. that no, you can't do that. Or how are you going to do that? Or why would you want to take all that on? Or, you know, mm -hmm. and that's them, right? They don't want to take that on. They don't want to, they don't think they can do it. And for a while I was just like, well, maybe they're right. Yeah. Okay. I won't do it. And enough. It was enough after a while. Right. And I, I just said, I'm just going to do it. And if it doesn't work, okay, right. we'll move on. Right. Um, what strategies or tools help you during those times when you, when there is so much self doubt or somebody's in your ear saying, who are you to do this? You know, how, how do you m muster through those times? <laughs> well, now see, this is where the easy part comes in being analytical and being the accountant mm -hmm. because I can dive into the research and I can understand it, right? I can dig in step by step. Okay. If I want to be here, what are the steps to get there? Fine. Let's start. Step one, and just keep working through. And as you see it, it starts to unfold. At least for me, it unfolds to, oh, yeah, okay, that's, all right, I've done that, I've done that. Oh, wait, I'm here already. I mean, in, in the business was the same way. Um, I think right ahead during our teacher training, I was looking at, well, maybe I should form an LLC, and how do I do that, right? And so you do the research. What does the state need? How do I do it? Sure. And, and you just fill out the paperwork, you write the business plan, you, you know, and that's how I've worked my way through those falling back on that ability to dig in to the detail. And one of the things I think that you do that other people are not ready to do is you're like, I'm going to look at the research mm -hmm. and I first, I'm not going to care what somebody else thinks. So somebody else might not like think this is a smart idea, but I'm going to do the research. And then the other thing that you do is you don't get bogged down by the whole path. You don't, you're not looking at, Oh my God, there's a, there's a, this, and then there's a, this, and then they have to write the business plan, which is where a lot of creative people get stuck because they're like, I don't know how to write the business plan. So I cannot do this. And right. you just like, you just keep looking at one teeny tiny piece at a time and chipping mm -hmm. away. Yes. And it, it takes a while. It doesn't like, I didn't do it in a week. I mean, I really think it probably took me six months, maybe a little less to go from that idea of teacher training and wanting to do more to actually getting the LLC documentation. And to be honest, I did it wrong. I mean, I filled out the paperwork and they kicked it back to me and they said, no, this is not right. And, and so I had to go, nobody died when that happened. No, no, it didn't. And I just regrouped, figured out, called them, what do I need? 
In fact, I think I had to do it twice mm -hmm. um, to do it over, to get it right, to get what they wanted. So then I could have that filing. So that certificate, and now I have a business and it's an LLC filed with the state of New York. So it's just, it just is, it's just, you can't, you want to see the future. You want to see what it is that you're trying to envision, but you've got to back it up and just step by step and know that the path will get you there. Yeah. Um, also when you said it took you six months, like it didn't happen in a week, that is true. And also to the outside world, it looks like it happened in a week, right? It looks like, oh, Mike just came up with this idea and boom, here he is on social media promoting this thing. Or he decides he wants to do a stand-up paddleboard. Boom, he's got stand-up paddleboards and he's making it happen. In the public's perception, it looks like you just did this overnight. Mm -hmm. Now that's true. It, it is. I mean, I've had a few people tell me like, oh, you're so far ahead that another business, another entrepreneur, you're so far ahead of what I'm doing. I don't even have business cards. And I'm like, well, go five minutes and go on a website and make business cards. It's not that hard. And, and believe it or not, it just happens. And in a week they're there yes. um, and it makes a difference. And, and I think if you're not, for me, I'm lucky. I have that balance. I can be creative and I can be analytical. And if that business side of it or that analytical side is not there, find someone who is just to talk to them and help get that structure. Because honestly, that's what knowing where you have to go and piecing it out is going to help anybody get to it. The, the business cards or whether it's a website, or Facebook, Instagram, all you can be overwhelmed by, oh, I've got to do all of these things. And it's, it, it's not, it's, it's, well, I did that today and that's a success. That's a win and move on and enjoy it. Right. So you're saying overwhelm is a choice. You can, you can choose to be bombarded by all the things or you can say today, I'm going to work on this piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it, sure. We could say it's a choice, but the reality is that sometimes we get sucked into it. Right. I mean, right. it's, well, that's you just know, our brains, right. That's just, it's our just brains. there. You, you have to be able to identify it first, right. You know, knowing that you have this uh, as an obstacle to overcome is the first step to understanding get, how you get by it. Okay. But, you know, yes, I mean, I think you can choose to either be overwhelmed by all of that and, and shut down and stifle that process, or how do I get by it and find that path to move past it? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. So um, when we are bringing our dream to life and we have all of these things that could potentially bombard us, it's really important that we make some shifts and there's definitely sacrifices. So I'm curious... What did you have to give up or shift or sacrifice to bring the dream to life? Well, you know, the time that it takes. So there's the training aspect. Some of the trainings are over the weekend. Some are several weekends. Mm -hmm. um, the stand-up paddleboard uh, classes I teach are on Saturday and Sunday because I work five days a week. So you've got to prioritize what's important. Or how do you organize it? I mean, I'm up and out of the house at 4.30 in the morning mm -hmm. to get to Green Lakes to, now I'm using inflatable boards to pump up these boards for an hour and a half. Well, I'm out in Syracuse at that point. So on my way home, can I do something else, right? So how do I prioritize uh, the necessities that I need to do? Grocery shopping or, you know, because those will sacrifice. I mean, your daily life, you know, that you're used to, oh, it's a Sunday afternoon. I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV all day. Well, okay. But I've sacrificed that ability to just relax right. on a Sunday to work. You know, that's something that I want to do. But find that later in the evening, there's time. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just uh, family get togethers. You know, we meet for dinner every, you know, once a week. Sometimes those I can't go. To those. So I've got to find time to, to meet up with them and mm -hmm. to see them and to see the people in my life that I want to be with while I'm hustling, trying to, to do all these things. Um, and then you, you see that you've missed things that you thought might be important that aren't. Mm -hmm. Here in Utica, uh, Saranac Thursday is a big gathering. Thursday nights at the brewery, people get together, there's music, there's drinking, all of that. I can't do that. I, I don't have time to just do that as I'm planning to either teach a yoga class or prepare for the weekend coming up. And 
I don't miss that. I thought it was important or I thought it was a priority, uh, but I can make other arrangements to see friends or to, to meet up with people or to have a, a date night or something with my wife and, and do that. So it's just, it's prioritizing, I think, uh, seeing what is really important to you and what you think is important to you mm -hmm. and identifying the difference. So, so something that you would, that was really important to you is no longer important to you, but you're also filled up by the thing that took its place. Yes. I mean, I, I, I think uh, definitely that, that I've replaced my, I'll give another example. My, on Saturday, I had to cancel uh, stand up paddleboard because of the weather. Mm -hmm. Well, I now I had all this free time and honestly, I didn't know what to do with myself because I, I, I had not scheduled something. There was nothing scheduled. Um, but then I just texted or called my parents and said, are you home? I'm coming over and was able to spend the afternoon with them. Nice. And you know, so it, it, it fits. There's still priorities that there's still things that are important to me. Mm -hmm. It's now reorganizing when or how it happens. I think, right. you know, sure. You give up uh, certain things. There might be things that you give up, but if it's important, if it's really part of your fabric that, that you wanted in your life, you'll find a way to fit it in mm -hmm. regardless. Just, so, just, it might look different. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's one thing that you wish you had known or uh, believed before you went to task bringing your idea to life? What would have been helpful? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one because I'll tell you what, I mean, even today, I, you know, you find you're learning constantly, right? So there's something you don't know what you don't know. And you know, you think you know it all until you don't know, until you realize, oh, geez, I didn't know that. Right. Um, sometimes I think having that, whether it be a coach or a mentor or just someone to sound off on, on certain ideas or certain things, you know, the legal aspect of a lot of the stuff that I didn't know mm -hmm. and how to do and the research and the digging that I had to do to figure it out that now I can help someone with, I think is where it, it really is for me, right? So if I've learned something along the way, I'm going to try to, to help someone mm -hmm. with that because yeah, there's a lot of things to putting a business together. There's a lot of little nuances that you don't think of that you don't know that honestly, I don't know if you knew ahead of time, it might help or not because so each, true. I agree hundred percent. Each circumstance is different. Right. Each one is different. Everybody's scenario is different. We can talk about payroll. We can talk about, you know, setting up scheduling, uh, legal documents, all of these things. But for your idea, your specific situation, it might be different. It's nice to, to hear someone. Um, and so, yeah, I would definitely recommend seeking out people of knowledge that, that might be able to help you. But ultimately, use just use them to learn mm -hmm. and not use them as the crutch to to get over that, what you're missing. Yeah, so when, we, when I left my first business, one of the things I left with was this great aha after four years of, oh my God, there's no recipe. Like it wasn't like I was missing an ingredient. I just really had to figure it out for myself and we had to figure it out for ourselves. And then in my next business, I went in with a completely different mindset, which is I'm learning as I go. And when I start talking to people about starting their businesses, I'm like, I'm always kind of surprised at how much I know now. And it's the same thing with you. Like, oh, I've already done the work. Let me help you. So you're yes. saying seek out people who can do that for you, who can, who've been there before mm -hmm. while understanding that it might not be exactly the same for you. Exactly. Exactly. You can't discount someone's experience to say, well, that's not me or that's not my experience. Understand that it's not but there is still value to what they can share with you. I love that piece. Um, when you bring, so I'm curious about what's next steps for you. So you had the idea to bring stand up paddleboard mm -hmm. and yeah. how, how did that go this summer for you? We had, a you know, it's good. It, 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 it's going good. Um, it's, it's happening. You know, I, I've got people registering and people are coming out. I run uh, two classes a day on Saturday and Sunday. Honest, if I'm being honest, I have yet to have a full four classes. So all four classes have never been full. Mm -hmm. But one class is full, one class might be empty. 
-hmm. One class might have three or four people. The next class has two or three. So it's, it's happening. I'm not disappointed at all with the results because I didn't really do much. I started late in the season. Mm -hmm. Usually it'll start uh, Labor Day to or Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, I started in July. Yeah. I started after the 4th of July, July 15th to be exact. Wow. So, you know, getting the word out, letting people know that I'm there, being there. There were days I would just go. There would be no one signed up. And I would just go and blow up a paddleboard and sit by a table to let people, hey, I'm here. Did that work? Mm -hmm. Was it a good strategy? It, it, it did, actually. I've, I've gotten one or two people from just people walking by. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to promote yourself. You've got to, to be out there. and you, you can't be afraid of, listen, I've gotten people comment on the cost. Uh -huh. you know, why would you charge that much? And when I did it here, it wasn't that much. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, you know, I'm not going to debate you about, I've done my research. Right. So it's, you know, right. this is that idea of just giving yourself permission and like, yeah, what they say with a grain of salt. Absolutely. And I, I would, and I did, and I talked to people, do you think I'm charging too much? And, the, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. No, I, you know, I've got people coming and, and some people even commented uh, that, no, it's a value and, and you can't get out on green lakes by yourself. It's a privilege to be out there. Yes. And they're right. They're absolutely. So, yeah, I, you know, it's, uh, it's a process. It's going to be, you know, I'm looking at different ideas for next year and, and what, maybe the fall with some fall foliage and, mm -hmm. and trying to incorporate some different. So right now I'm just doing the yoga, the paddleboard yoga. As, and so now I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe I can just do a paddle, just to paddle out on the lake, yes. work our way around the lake, see the view. An excursion. And, yeah, just to something different and, and see what pe a lot of people have asked about renting. Oh, yeah. Can we rent the paddle boards? And, and no, I, it's not a service I'm offering right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're being honest again about it. The insurance, right? my insurance right now doesn't cover that. So I can't let you get out there. So you look and you call the insurance company and all right, what's it going to take? And mm -hmm. can that be an offering? So I'm happy with it and we'll just see where it goes. And what's coming up next for you as you move into fall and winter with your giving up SUP and what's, what's happening next with your yoga business? Oh yeah, no, not giving up SUP actually, moving to the pool. <gasps> You're, that's brilliant. <laughs> so uh, I've got, uh, working with Mohawk Valley Community College in Utica. And so one night a week, uh, Friday nights, six o'clock, we're um, doing what we're calling floating yoga. So bring oh. the paddle boards to their pool. And we're going to be on the water and do a yoga class. So. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. That's yeah. a good connection. That's wonderful. Yeah. 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 So it was a, it was, you know, so what do you do? Right. It is, it's a seasonal, seasonal business. We don't live in an area. That's what, when I went for the training, some of the conversation was, it's like, look, I get about three months, four months tops mm -hmm. where I can be on the water. And there are actually people in other parts of the country uh, Las Vegas is a, an example of someone, they do it outside in the pool mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. like that's part of their business. So, so you just have to get creative. You do. You do. And, and I'm looking at different avenues of yoga, different types of yoga. I, I just got certified in broga. Oh, so, uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, you keep growing, you keep learning. Yeah. yeah which feeds you. So if you had to give advice to a creative person who's stuck in the idea phase, what, what piece of advice do you think would be most helpful? Uh, my advice would definitely be take that step, just figure out the steps that you need and take that first step. Mm -hmm. That's all, mm -hmm. right? You know where you are. You've got this grand idea. My advice to you is figure out what are the steps necessary to get there Put those aside and just take that first step. Yes. That's all. I'll be honest. I, I've heard you talk before uh, about something that, that really resonated with me because I, I have a, an opportunity. The paddleboard business has opened up an opportunity to expand, mm. which means, though, I've got to take on payroll, which means I've got to take on, you know, staffing yeah. that I've never done. It's yeah. big, you know, and I'm at that point now where I'm like, uh, okay, can I do this? Mm -hmm. Should I do it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a big, I have to work a full-time job. This could be, you know, can I really do it? And what I had heard you say was it doesn't, again, you don't have to do the whole thing. You don't even have to do it. Mm -hmm. Just look into it. 
Mm-hmm. Find out. Research. And that's what I'm doing. I took that, you know, the things that I kept saying for the last half hour about breaking it down into steps, I didn't do. Yeah. I just got overwhelmed by the fact that, wait, this is a hobby and now it's becoming a real business. What, right. You know, with a big opportunity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the steps now to, to do the research on what it would take, you know, and the reality is, is can you find good people, right? If I'm going to have to have employees, if I'm going to have staff, they're going to be the backbone of it. And I can't do it without them. So whether or not financially it would work out, which is an important part to, to figure out, if I don't have the people to help me support it, then I just can't do it. Because there's just no way. And then you have to decide, is this a lifestyle that I want? Do I want to be an owner of a business that has people that I have to manage and systems that I have to create? Is that something that I want to do? But once you have all of the information, then you can make a decision. I think so many of us make decisions based on fear or the, the fear of overwhelm before we really like go yes. in and dig deep and find out what's, what are the facts? What have other people done? And the yes. other thing I love about this just example that you gave, um, you just spent some time talking about how you break things down and you systematically go at them. And then you got this idea or this opportunity and it kind of hit you like a tidal wave and you were kind of just treading water there for a few minutes. And you were like, oh, wait, I already know how to do this. Let me go back to step one. And yes. so the most analytical and organized of us can get overwhelmed and can get Absolutely. stuck. And so I'm really glad that you shared that. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. No, it's it, it, very true. Very true. How can people follow you and connect with you and take a, take a class with you? Yeah. Uh, 315yoga.com is the website. Uh, there's a link on there for stand up paddleboard or sup yoga. Mm-hmm can click on that. I'm on Instagram is, is 315 Yoga, Facebook. I try to put Facebook events up there to let people know what's happening, calendars, things like that. So those are the biggest way, the easiest ways. Great. Uh, so social media follow. and your website. Great. And then your schedules for classes are on your website? They are. The schedules are there. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, 7.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m. is the stand-up paddleboard. Right now, I'm running that through September 16th mm-hmm. to try to see how the weather holds out. Um, so there's, there's some availability there. And then my regular yoga classes, those are going to change a bit as we work through September, but the schedule's out there and find out where I'm at. Great. I encourage people to check out Mike. I've taken Mike's class because we took our training together, and he's got a really lovely approach to yoga that feels inclusive and totally doable. So uh, go check out his yoga classes. I want to say thank you again, Mike. I really appreciate your time this morning and also your honesty because a lot of people are not willing to talk about this hard journey of bringing an idea to life. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Talk to you soon, Mike. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.